You were raped while you were in Georgia? No, I wasn't. You were not? No, I wasn't. Oh, so all those stories that are in the books and so forth are not true? Yes, sir. Yes. They're not true. Right. Ms. McCorvey, uh, what happened? Why did you why did you modify your views? You haven't totally changed them, have you? Uh, well, I've I've modified my uh, re religious path. I became a Christian uh, Tuesday night. I was baptized here in Dallas, right, uh, by the Reverend Flip Brenham, and um, now I've um, changed my position on choice. Well, tell me about it, you, because uh, you and I were talking earlier this afternoon, and, and you explained to me, but put it in your own words, how do you feel uh, about the notion of abortion now, a woman's right to choose? Well, for years and years, I used to think that um, it was a woman's right, a, a woman's right to choose, period. Uh, but after working in four abortion clinics here in the Dallas area and learning a lot more, um, I... I started having inner conflicts with myself, Ted, and um, I, I really got extremely depressed when women would call into the clinics and want to make appointments for second trimester abortions. Now that's a distinction you made when you and I were talking on the phone earlier today also. Second, yes, sir. second trimester abortions. Yes, How do sir. you feel about a, a woman's right to have an abortion in the first trimester? Well, I, I think for some women it's, it's, it would be appropriate, you know, especially in the case of fetal deformity. Uh, if they find out early on in the pregnancy that their child or s suspected child is going to be uh, deformed or br born without a brain stem or something like that, I, I think that the child should be aborted. I don't think it should be brought into the world. Right. Um, but um, I, I've seen too much, I've, I've, I've learned too much, and I, I really just honestly cannot deal with it anymore. You realize that over the years, I mean, first, anonymously, when you were just known as Jane Roe, uh, and then later on, you became, certainly for some people, not all, but for some people, you became something of a symbol of a, of a woman's right to choose. You must have given a great deal of thought over these last few weeks and months uh, about the impact that you're going to have on the movement itself. Do you care? I, I don't think that the I don't think that the movement is the issue here. I believe, Ted, that the issue here is that I have found a spiritual path that is concrete and with Jesus Christ, and I, I feel very comfortable with that. And I. I'm doing this for me. I'm, I'm not doing it for anyone else. I, I'm, just, I'm just watching out for my own self. Let, let, let me turn the question around a little bit. What, okay. if, what if now the, the right to life movement were to say, you see, now she has finally realized the error of her ways, although you still seem to have uh, you know, some ambiguity of, of thinking toward abortion, but what if they tried to turn you into some kind of a symbol? Uh, what if they tried to use you now uh, the way that some people feel you were used by the, uh, uh, the choice movement before? Uh, we've already talked about that at great length, and there will, there, there will not be any exploitation of my uh, political status. Who's we? Uh, the, the right to life people. They, they have spoken to you about this, or, or you, uh, who, who approached whom here? Uh, well, it was just like a general conversation that um, Flip and I were having one morning in Operation Rescue's office. I'm sorry, who's Flip? Uh, Flip Brenham is the National Director of Operation Rescue uh, Dallas. And, and how, did you come, how did you come to meet him? Uh, I met him uh, years and years ago uh, in front of the abortion clinics, of course, uh, when they would come in protest in front of the clinics. And um, we, were, we were arch enemies. I mean, we, we never spoke a kind word to each other at all. And one morning he came over and he told me, he says, Norma, he says, do you know that God is pro-choice? And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, he says, God is pro-choice, but he, he wants that everyone should choose life. And then he showed me the scripture um, and he read it to me from the Bible. 
and that that got me to thinking all right i'll tell you what let's take a short break and then when when you come back maybe you can tell me how how you agreed that you would not be used in any fashion by the the pro-life movement okay okay we'll be back in just a moment About the assurance that you got that your your change of attitude toward abortion that that is not going to be used by by Operation Rescue or groups like that to further their cause. Um, I don't know. We were just talking in general one day in the office, and um, someone said something about exploitation of me, and I said I won't have it. I said, I've already been exploited n enough to last me a lifetime. I said, all I simply want to do is come in here and serve the Lord and do whatever I can to help prevent women to better. I mean, I want to help women educate themselves uh, in, around, their se around sex education. Uh, I, I would like to teach women uh, that there's other alternatives to abortions. Where are you working now? I'm not working anywhere. Where, I, where are you volunteering now? Uh, I'm volunteering for Operation Rescue. How can you do that and still, I mean, I come back to, to what you and I were talking about, and maybe you're still working a lot of these things through, but it seems to me that your thinking is still a wee bit confused. Right? How can you be working for Operation Rescue and at the same time feel that it's all right for, for women to have an abortion in the first trimester under, um, under certain circumstances? Under certain, cer under certain c circumstances, I I feel that it would it might be necessary. But I mean, don't you see that there's a conflict here? I mean, Operation Rescue is, as best I understand it, categorically opposed to abortion. They are. They're very uh, very opposed to abortion. Uh, but they they know of my opinions. They know of my views. Uh, we've we've discussed them at great length, and um, they they know that this is the. The transition that I'm going through now, um, and and I'm sure that they're all out there praying for me that that I will come full circle and say that abortion is no longer right for any any woman. You said, uh, I'm sorry, Norma. You said in passing a moment ago that that you felt you had already been used too much. Um, used by whom? To what end? Well, I I've been shunned by. Um, Quite a few of the national leaders in the pro-choice movement. I, people, uh, to me, sometimes I, I really get this really strong hit that, that people think that I'm just like totally stupid and, and I'm not. I mean, I have, I've got brains and I have ideas and I just don't really feel like they hear me. And I mean, I don't, I'm not that vast or quality, you know. I'm a street kid. I'm an ex-alcoholic. I'm an ex-drug dealer. I'm an ex-drug addict, you know. So, I mean, I wasn't their chosen one to be their special Jane Roe. But what I'm saying is that they, they just never gave me the respect that I thought that I deserved. Let me try and, let me try and present what might be, I mean, I, I, I doubt very much that you'll ever hear this in public from them, but what might be their point of view. Okay. You're not, and you've just sort of outlined the reasons yourself when you talk about your own background, you're not exactly the ideal role model, right? Right. So are you surprised that they didn't choose then to invite you to sort of put you up front and say, here's, Let me take here's, here's our poster gal? Let me, let me explain to you this other way, Ted. And back in 1969, when I lied and I told Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey that I had been raped, I did that out of pure desperation. I wanted to have an abortion. I saved up my rent money. I went to an illegal abortion clinic here in Dallas, Texas. I saw the conditions of that clinic. I saw the dry blood on the floor. I saw all the roaches and all the other creepy things crawling around the floor. The only thing that stopped me was the fact that the clinic had been busted a year, I mean, a week before that. That was the only thing that stopped me. Yeah, uh, okay, I mean, I, ironically, you never had an abortion, did you? I mean, no, you, you, no, you, sir, you I never had an abortion. You carried your child to full term. Yes, sir, I did. You wanted an abortion. Yes, sir, uh, I did. And, and in a sense, you were angry at one point at, at Sarah Weddington for not letting you get one because it didn't suit their purposes at the time. They they needed you to be pregnant, right? 
they needed their plaintiff to be pregnant. It was exactly right. But see, what really was the tail end of the whole shamil was the fact that when Sarah Weddington came out with her book, I don't know, two or three years ago, uh, she told in her book that she had an abortion and she went to Mexico. And when I sat across that table at Columbo's Pizza here in Dallas, Texas, and I asked her, I said, Sarah, do you know where I can go and get an abortion? And she said, no. Well, she lied to me. And she gets off easy by saying, well, she was an officer of the court and that she couldn't uh, tell of illegal dealings when she had done the, damn, the same damn thing herself. Why couldn't she have told me? So you see the, do you see the parallels here? No, I, I understand. You, you, if you feel you were used in, in one sense by these people for their purposes. Does it occur to you that you may also be being used now by the Operation Rescue people for their purposes? No, sir. And they, I will not let them use me. I, I will have one more public appearance after this show tonight, and that will be Saturday. I will be introduced at the Ross Perot presidential candidate, whatever it's called, thing here in Dallas. So you'll be introduced by the folks from Operation Rescue? Yes, sir, I will. And, and, but it doesn't occur to you that in some sense you may be being used. And, and I'm not being holier than that, that here. I mean, as a journalist, I'm using you right now, too. It's an interesting story. But, but do you not feel that the Operation Rescue people want to get their mile of publicity out of this, too, for their point, uh, to make their point? When these people from Operation Rescue call me at home now, they don't say, hey, Norma, I want you to come down to the office, or hey, Norma, we're having a fundraiser. Uh, you know, you, have, you, you can get in, and we're going to introduce you. We're going to acknowledge the fact that you're there, you know. But we don't want you to speak because you're a loose cannon, you know. And we don't want really loose cannons around, but we really do need you there because you're Jane Rowe, and we don't have any other choice. So, so go figure. You're, you're, you're saying that's the way you were used by the, by the pro-choice movement? Yes, sir. Okay, well, Norman McCorvey, I, I, I wish you that peace and tranquility that you clearly thank want. You. And, and I thank you very much for being with us this evening. Thank you very much. And I'll I be, appreciate you. Thank you. I'll be back in just a moment. By my uh, re religious past. I became a Christian uh, Tuesday night. I was baptized here in Dallas.